Last topic uh, for today is really jumping to the Neuralink uh, model. This is one of those topics I've been wanting to talk to you about for some time and kind of just the impact on society. We kind of touched on it just a minute ago when when we get to a point where AI is level five and we have a fully uh, sentient AI, it's probably gonna happen in our lifetime. Um, Elon talks about this a lot. And one of the things that I noticed on a, a video I was watching last night, it's it, it, him referencing this and his whole point for Neuralink is, it's kind of like if you can't beat them, you gotta join them. And, and that's kind of the, the Neuralink theme. Uh, if you can't beat them, join them. What are your thoughts on where Neuralink is going and how fast can we get there? I think Neuralink is broader than that, first of all. I think that may be the long run goal, but the short run goal is Neuralink is gonna cure brain diseases. It's gonna help sure. paralyzed people walk, it's gonna help blind people see, it's gonna help deaf people hear, it's gonna help, like my mother has Alzheimer's. I just saw my mother yesterday and, you know, it's funny, we were talking about image recognition. My mother was asking me a question about where we were and I said, well, what kind of tree is that? And she didn't recognize a palm tree, so her, Im Im her image recogn recognition software has failed and she can't recognize a palm tree anymore. So. Um, curing Alzheimer's would be an absolutely spectacular, especially since I figure I got a 50-50 shot of getting it in the next 25 years. Um, that would be an actual, you know, that's just not me personally, but millions and millions of people get brain diseases. Sure. That's a huge, huge impact. Um, but so there's sort of the commercial side of where does this go over the next 10, 20 years, which is number one, can you get it to work? So like we talked about Boring Company earlier, there's no question that tunnels work. We don't know mm -hmm. how well brain machine interfaces are going to work. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear it works to some extent. We don't know how well it works. Um, so if they're able to deliver this brain machine interface in an effective way, then you can go with, let's say you're, you treat 10 million patients a year, you, you put this chip in 10 million patients a year with brain diseases, par paralysis, yeah. blindness, whatever, and you charge $10,000 a person. Well, that's a pretty big market right there, right? Yeah. Now you take it to the next level and you say, well, what if this was able to enhance regular people who don't have a disease? What yeah, if this was able augment. to protect, like forget about enhancing. What if this was just able to protect me from the ravages of Alzheimer's, right? And like, I want to get it installed when I'm 60 rather than waiting till I'm 75, right? Mm -hmm. Or 65, you know, to get it installed ahead because I see the brain disease coming. And then you take it to the next level of what if it's able, like we, right now we communicate with people on our phones and we type like this. What if you were able right. to communicate directly from your brain um, your bandwidth increases, your ability to access information increases. If you're able to access the web, you know, when you're searching for something on Google, you've got to do a bunch of searches. What if it was a lot faster? So yeah, you're talking about the A, what, what, what people call the AI singularity when there's this moment where there's this pursuit of artificial general intelligence. Artificial and general intelligence is not task specific, but being able to perceive the whole world and become more animal-like to perceive right. everything and make decisions on a, on a on an animal level so one week it's as good as a mouse right at some point it's good this it's very likely to happen you never know maybe it'll never happen i think it's very likely to happen at some point it will get as good as a mouse and then they throw more compute power at it they throw more data at it and a week later it's as good as a as a, as a dog and then, i don't i think dogs are smarter than chimp than not my dog but <laughs> some dogs are smarter than mice and then you get to a chimpanzee the week after it reaches chimpanzee level, it's at human level. And the week after yeah. that, it looks at us like we're a chimp, right? Yeah. And, and so there's this dangerous moment where it gets smarter than us. And it looks at us and it says, is this a threat or is this a pet? And we, right. we want to go for the pet scenario. <laughs> we, we don't want to be viewed as a threat. We want to be viewed as a pet. So... Um, and are we useful to it? So if we have Neuralink and it enhances our capabilities, it may mean we're more useful for longer to yeah. the AI. But at some point it looks at us like an ant and it doesn't even know we exist anymore. But I think there's some other really big ideas that go along with Neuralink. Like there's a TV show, I think it's Amazon Prime called Upload, which is really stupid, but it carries this idea forward of what if you could upload your consciousness into the cloud? Well, Elon's then, talked about that. Yes, well, it's in the it's his favorite book series. If you're interested in fiction, there's a book series called The Culture Series by Ian Banks, um, and it's in it's in Ian Banks. It's in some of those novels. If you could upload yourself to the cloud, what if you could download yourself to an Android, like right. a robot that was designed to carry your consciousness, and then mm -hmm. you build a starship. And 
we're not going to be able to beat the speed of light, but you develop a starship that's able to go to other star systems and you put a human consciousness in a robot and you're actually able to travel the stars. And it, you, yeah. you can go really crazy with this concept. What if you could replicate your consciousness and put yourself in a hundred or a thousand robots and send them to a thousand different star systems? Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot. It really gets, we're really heading, my, one of my lines for Elon Musk is making, uh, making science fiction reality since 1999. You know, that's like his, uh, it could be his motto. You know, landing orbital <laughs> rocket boosters, developing self-driving cars. He's making science fiction into reality. Yeah. Okay. So in the near term, <laughs> yeah. near term for Neuralink, we, we know that the medical uh, potential here is huge. Uh, the, the potential maybe to, to help accelerate learning. There's a lot of potential options here. Obviously, in the early stages before we get to Ascension AI scenario, which could happen in the next 30 years, we're going to see a, a scenario here where we could look at um, all sorts of interventions, including hacking of these potential systems. Could you imagine hacking a Neuralink? Yes. So Elon has this practice at Tesla and maybe in other businesses where they have hack day and they take a Model 3 or whatever, they take a vehicle and they, they basically give hackers access to be able to try to hack into the system. And anybody yeah. who succeeds gets, a, gets, gets the car, right? So they're basically paying hackers to teach them what the vulnerabilities of their system might be. Sure. And Elon will follow the same approach with Neuralink. But yeah. I, I, don't, so I don't know if we fully explored it. Up. I don't know if we fully explored the market potential for Neuralink in our previous when we just talked about this. I don't know if you want to talk about this, but yeah, I love to imagine it's 100 million customers a year who are adding getting a new Neuralink. I mean, at a certain point, you run out of people. But, you know, sure. let's say let's say it's maybe it's 50 million, but call it 100 million people a year. Get a new Neuralink Small um, fraction. So you do that. And every three years they upgrade and it costs ten thousand dollars to do it. And every three years they upgrade to the new Neuralink. Right. Just like they upgrade their iPhones. Well, a hundred million times ten thousand, right? That's I think that's a trillion dollars a year if, I'm, if my numbers aren't wrong. And now yeah. you take everybody's upgrading. You got a hundred million new customers every year, and then every three years they're upgrading, right? See, so the revenue potential is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's definitely a scenario. This is one of those long-term thought. Uh, processes that you really have to kind of yeah. dive in a, a but, bit deep. Have, do, you, do you know anything about uh, Google's DeepMind and kind of where they're going with that? No, I'm, I'm not familiar. I know what DeepMind has done, but I don't really follow it. I just think, I think we got to be cautious with Neuralink about when we talk near term, that it's a research project right now. Right. Um, I think they're starting human trials this year. Yeah. My, my hunch is that they will not commercialize Neuralink in a meaningful way for at least five years. They won't, they won't be able to scale and do it any significant numbers for it be just because human trials take a while. And because sure. you've got to make sure it's working, you've got to make sure you're doing it right. And then they're going to be updating and coming up with the next generation. So my hunch is that Neuralink will not scale for about five years. Yeah. So, so we shouldn't expect it to be coming around the corner. But I'm 55 and I want to have my first Neuralink before I'm 65. So I'm hoping it's ready to not, not for not to go to the stars just to be able to be to be prevent to anticipate Alzheimer's coming. Yeah. Well, I, I like that because I think when I was just my continued research on Neuralink and, and it's interesting that Elon continues to kind of put the position of that whether this is a decade away or 15 years away or 20 years away is that uh, his whole approach is that and his concern is, is that Neuralink may be the element that we need to essentially one, just be able to uh, coexist with AI and or like you kind of referred to earlier is we become very useful uh, to at AI. Least, at least general. somewhat useful. Yeah. We just have to be a little useful. <laughs> yeah. I really As, encourage you, if you haven't read it before, read read the Ian Banks culture series. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, he, he touches on a lot of that. It's Elon's favorite series of novels. Really encourage you I to like read it. that. Yeah, well, it's going to be fun to watch, that's for sure. Uh, Warren, it's always great having you on the show, definitely. Uh, lots of, of mind-blowing concepts here. I I'm gonna, can't wait to see more. I want to send you that research on the drone uh, side of things because I think you'd Please. be interested in it. And I'll also send you my workup and the model that we did on food delivery uh, where Tesla would be involved because it would be a, a scenario of you know a certain required fleet. It gives you basically a two 
yeah, it's a two trillion dollar uh, market cap. So yeah, really quick I'm, on that, I question whether business. I question whether Amazon will have the the AI to na for the drones to navigate safely, and and Tesla. Yeah. If, if if the drones is the solution, well, Tesla has the AI exactly. solution for the for the perceiving the environment and deliver and and working without killing people. You don't want it to kill people. Whatever your technology is, it shouldn't kill people. Exactly, and I I, I would agree. I would think Tesla, f to me, feels like it's got or or a Tesla like system, especially with robo taxi. Depending on how fast we can get there, has to happen in the next two years because the acceleration of of just learning in general and engineering with maybe even Amazon, what they're doing with the drone deliveries and other companies too that are kind of going this direction. It's gonna advance at a, a certain level of pace, but I think with, with RoboTaxi or Robo Delivery, uh, Tesla definitely has a first mover uh, position. So I'll send you my model on it because I think you might like it and be intrigued with it. Anyway, thanks for stopping in on today's uh, show. Always great to have you. Look forward to our next talk for sure. Thanks very much, Paul. Yeah, man, we'll see you. All right, so you guys are all checking in here on the podcast. Make, make sure and leave us a rating. That's how we get feedback from you. And you can also join us right here on YouTube by subscribing and hitting the bill. Don't forget, you know, check out Warren's channel. I think you guys are going to love what he's doing over there. Uh, definitely check him out. Just search Warren Redlick on YouTube. You'll find all of his great content. If you have an idea for TechPath, shoot us a, uh, an email. That can work. You can send that to producer at revernetworks.com, or you can also hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.